Update, brought to you by Simcox Advocates, advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit simcox.com or call 690 300. Manx Radio's Update with Andy Wint. Faster my good evening, it's half past five. This is Update for Thursday, 16th of November 2023 from Manx Radio. 30 minutes and we'll look at the latest news on the Isle of Man and background to that news with sport, business, sea watch, travel updates and the newsmakers in person. Uh, this evening is our Heritage Railway Network safe. The OFT wants to meet Isle of Man Energy over gas disconnections. Growing the sport of athletics here, one in five Manx workers works for the government and 200 of the world's best pool players arrive here tomorrow. Man Benham for all your business and legal needs. First of all, at 29 minutes ahead of 6 o'clock, the update news headlines. Faster my Siobhan Fletcher. Faster my. Data revealed by the Cabinet Office shows nearly 20% of the Isle of Man's working population are government employees. As of March 2023, there were more than 8,300 government staff, which were collectively paid nearly £373 million. Four vehicles were seized by police yesterday. It's as the Roads Policing Unit continues with its island-wide winter lights operation, whereby motorists are stopped and their vehicle inspected to ensure it's roadworthy for the colder months. The yard at the centre of a strangles outbreak on the island has been given the all clear after a thorough testing programme. News that an animal had contracted the condition broke in September. Further afield, an inquest concluded police made serious mistakes in the case of a woman who was stabbed to death by a man she was accused she accused of stalking. The jury decided Gracie Spinks was unlawfully killed by Michael Sellers in Derbyshire in 2021 before he took his own life. Israeli forces have reportedly dropped leaflets warning Palestinians to flee parts of southern Gaza, possibly suggesting an expansion of their offensive. Meanwhile, Hamas says it was behind a shooting which injured seven people at a tunnel checkpoint leading into the West Bank. And Scotland's health secretaries blamed an £11,000 roaming charge on his sons watching football. Michael Matheson had previously suggested his Parliament iPad was only used for work purposes during a holiday to Morocco. There are your headlines, news at six. Man Benham. Contact us by phone, video call, email or face-to-face. We're happy to connect with you. Manx Radio Weather with Manx Glass and Glazing. Garamaya, thank you, Siobhan, here at the home of the Halfway Horse Tram. Occasional strong winds is the warning for the North Irish Sea, state of sea, slight or moderate. And your three day weather this evening dry, mostly cloudy, a moderate southeasterly this evening. And uh, overnight as well, minimum 7 degrees for Jehenya. Sunny intervals tomorrow, Friday, with possible spots of rain at first light. Southerly, top temperature 10 degrees. Late evening rain will persist into early Saturday, the overnight minimum 9. And for Jasan, any rain will soon clear first thing, then dry and cloudy on a fresh to strong south-southwesterly. Highest 14 degrees. Tides on the way out, low water 17 minutes past 7, high tide 21 minutes after 1am, low tide tomorrow morning 24 minutes before 8 and sunrise at 11 minutes to 8. Manx Glass and Glazing are able to offer an emergency out-of-hours boarding up service. Call 491918. Work to improve safety on the Isle of Man's Heritage Railways is underway, but there's still more to be done, according to the Department of Infrastructure's Chief Officer. Emily Kerfee and Infrastructure Minister Tim Crookall, MHK, were asked about safety issues by the Chair of the Environment and Infrastructure Policy Review Committee, Rob Mercer, MLC. I think there's there's definitely um, more we can be doing in terms of the near-miss reporting. That's still relatively slow, um, and we, we need to do more more on that um but i think that there are there are conversations better conversations having around health and safety with with the teams that are working under heritage railway as well so mm. um yeah from my perspective um having having those additional people looking at what we're doing and also you know, using our own health and safety expertise from within government as well to to give oversight on on what we're doing I, we're doing what everything i think we're able to do in terms of managing 
managing those health and safety risks. We can't completely eliminate all the risks. There will always be risks. It's a heritage railway, but we're doing what we can to, to have oversight of them. So my other, my other question is, you know, are the heritage railways safe? Safe as in for keeping forever or for, for using? Oh, I, I, I leave the interpretation entirely <laughs> up to you. Maybe both of them. As, as far as we know, I think they are safe for using. We, we, we have these people that inspect and assess every every year and we, our staff, we have some very qualified staff as well. You know, they're always keeping, as Emily has just said, you know, there's another pair of eyes. Everybody's always looking and checking things. So as far as we know at the moment, yeah, I would say they were safe. A public meeting was held last night to discuss the onshore and offshore wind farm proposals that could be developed for the Isle of Man. We'll hear from Arbury Castle, Town and Maloo, MHK, Tim Glover and Liberal Vanin leader Paul Wetherill. But first, former government minister, long-time MHK, Peter Caron. Well, I think the point is what we need to be on about is the basics of the economics. We've watched and worked very hard and sacrificed for years being virtually on our own when we were in Timbrels. And the position is, is I fear that there's going to be an absolute economic meltdown before long. At the end of the day, you can't spend what you, you don't earn. What we've got is, is we've got more and more debts. We've got deficit spending every year. And this is not a new phenomenon in the last sort of five or six years, which has got to be sorted out. It's affecting a lot of people in the constituency. And I'm here to represent the constituents that I've been elected by. Peter made some very good points and I share those concerns as well. I mean, we've had a report out uh, literally today from the Public Accounts Committee where they said that the time frame was ambitious, it was too short, that there was a lack of preparation ahead of the whole project. Got the phrase here that's in the report, a hopelessly ambitious and unrealistic budget. That's ringing alarm bells to me. I'm Paul Weatherall, I'm Chair of Liberal Bannon. I was invited by uh, Jenny Bean um, to find out more about the geothermal option. It was interesting, but I don't think all of the facts were given. Um, the costs of putting the boreholes down is only part of the situation. Uh, you then have to have a power station. How much is that going to cost? So the, the figures being bandied about are uh, misleading. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Some of the world's best pool players are among nearly 200 competitors competing on the Isle of Man for the IPA Grand Finals at the Palace Hotel in Douglas from tomorrow and across the weekend. Now in its fifth year of coming to the Isle of Man, the event now has a new look four-day format. IPA Chair Kevin Barton explains what keeps them bringing this prestigious event back to Manx Shores. We run a series of uh, tour events uh, throughout the year and it all culminates um, at this event in the Isle of man with the grand finals it's, it's the one with the enhanced prize money uh, the enhanced ranking points it's the ones that uh, all the players want to win and for those amateurs who are wanting to turn professional next year so uh, there's a lot at stake this weekend everybody loves coming to the Isle of Man they love the venue they love going around the island on, on their off time and um, it's just a great feel um, great event that uh, everybody you know puts in the calendar at, at the start of the year when, when the dates are announced so for the first time this year we've actually extended it so normally the uh, the, the fierce competitions all starts on the Friday and the Saturday and, and finishes on the Sunday but we've uh, extended this year to give it more of a, a festival feel so we, we started yesterday afternoon with uh, various different events uh, a lot more relaxed you know people smiling and uh, you know no dress code and things like that so um, it's um, it's had a really good feel about it for the you know it's the first time we've done it and um, yeah it seems to have been uh, a big success so far so uh, long may it continue Our IPA events are, are open to everyone so um, you know we've got people will be coming to this event for the first time and we you know, also got a lot of support from people from the island as well who um, love to take part in the event and, and test themselves against uh, you know the very best players in the world and uh, you know that's what these events do they bring all the best players you know they go head to head over the three days to see who's going to take home all the silverware pool is, is such a great event to watch and um, no doubt all the, the many fans and people will be watching on the live stream or in the venue as well over the three days to see how uh, the story unfolds The Office of Fair Trading is seeking an urgent meeting with Isle of Man Energy over claims 90 90 households are at risk of being cut off from their gas supply. One customer facing the possibility of a winter in the cold is Leah Garrett, a 23-year-old single mother. She told Manx Radio the company won't help her and she's calling our government to do more. There's always going to be a win and lose conversation with the government giving people money and helping people towards these bills because there's always going to be a group that's going to be missed out or not 
helped enough, but it, the government needs to start somewhere. They need to show some support. They need to help in any way they can. Last year, people were like lucky enough. There were people on benefits. I was lucky enough to receive those financial packages, but I know some friends and family, especially who were working 12 hour shifts on minimum wage, they could not pay their gas bills still because they were not entitled to those financial packages which seems silly because they are working people they work hard they pay tax national insurance they're getting out working 12 hour shifts and they're still not entitled to help and that's the most devastating part is seeing people run ragged without any recognition that they're working so hard but they're not getting anywhere or getting any compensation from the government to help with these bills you know you see on facebook about a nine hundred thousand pound flooding wall that they want to build or this new boat that they've bought this year but has many mechanical issues or the expansion of a dock that we may not even really use you know which all is costing hundreds of thousands of pounds when you have people who have been cut off from hot water and heating in their home sat in the cold you have old people sat freezing to death because they are too scared to put their heating on and the government have thrown it into little projects like this and it gets me quite angry as a parent as well because we shouldn't have to as a community struggle with this sort of stuff not in this day and age but we are sea watch with the isle of man steam packet company Motor vessel Mangsman didn't leave uh, Hesham until 28 minutes to 5, so she's not going to be in Douglas until gone 8 o'clock, really. Leaving Douglas at 9.45, arriving in Hesham about 1.30 a.m., leaving Hesham tomorrow morning at 3.30, back to Douglas at 7.15, and the morning departure, 8.45, Mangsman heads to Hesham. Follow the Steam Packet on Twitter for the latest sailing information. The top Manx athlete, Ollie Lockley, said to spearhead the latest push to grow the sport of athletics on the Isle of Man. He's been appointed Isle of Man Athletics Development Officer and he explains what his priorities are in the new role. To start with, I think we're very fortunate to have what we already have. You know, in terms of infrastructure, you know, you go to some places in the UK and they'd only dream of having the facilities that we have. So we have to be very grateful for what we already have. And obviously in terms of the athletics calendar, there's plenty of races and there's loads of uh, different events you know whether that's curl running distance running middle distance track running i think the biggest issue is just trying to get the communication clear and to make people aware that the events are on and that anyone can take part and i think once you get involved that kind of community is really welcoming definitely one of my priorities off the bat really is to trying to get more volunteers involved and you'll find that it's kind of the same group of people that have been doing it for years and years which is admirable from their perspective but obviously there'll there'll come a point where they'll step back and then we need to kind of fill those spaces so we want to do that now before we get to a situation where we have a bit of a lull in people not able to attend events so yeah one of my biggest priorities to start with is trying to get more volunteers because without volunteers local athletics community and club athletics would just die obviously there's going to be a little bit of a teething process and finding my feet i think in the short term it's just getting used to how everything is working and looking at like the development plan and then having some short-term goals one of the a couple of things that i'd like to get started on would be the volunteer situation because obviously we've got events we're in, in the height of cross country and obviously the ramsey 5ks and different events like that so we still need volunteers for those races i will be doing a little bit of promotion as well for the clubs just trying to see if we can get some more numbers to join early next year as well so there's plenty to do so a few short-term goals as, as well to keep me keep me busy manx radio business briefing at 16 minutes before six premium chocolatier hotel chocolat said today it's agreed to be bought by the u.s food giant mars in a 534 million pound deal under the terms of the acquisition hotel chocolat shareholders get 375p per share in cash representing a premium of around 169.8 percent to the closing share price yesterday chair stephen alexander said hotel chocolat is a brand with a strong long-term prospect and today's deal allows it to grow further and faster. And for a full daily market,
market report, go to ramseycrocourt.com. The price paid to generate electricity by UK offshore wind farms has been upped by two-thirds, 66%, as the UK government tries to get energy firms to invest. It comes after an auction for offshore wind projects failed to attract any bids, with firms saying the price set for power generator was too low. The UK government's lifted the price from £44 per megawatt hour to £73. Companies have said the cost of building wind farms has soared because of inflation and interest rates, while the maximum price they can charge for electricity they generate has been relatively low. The UK is home to the world's four largest wind farms, which provided almost 14% of the UK's electricity generation last year, according to UK statistics. But when no companies bid for project contracts in September, plans to nearly quadruple offshore wind from 13 gigawatts to 50 by 2030 were dealt a heavy blow. The Stock Market Report, brought to you by Ramsey Crookall. UK and European markets were lower amid a cooling of the positive sentiment seen earlier in the week. The dollar held its ground after a volatile two days. U.S. crude prices fell and gold rose as the U.S. Treasury yields edged lower. The numbers reported by Ramsey Crockall at the close in London, the FTSE 100, down just over a percentage point, 7,410. The DAX in Frankfurt up a quarter of a percent, 15,786. And a short time ago in New York City, the Dow Jones Industrial down four-tenths of a percent, 34,844. The NASDAQ Tech Stocks Index down four-tenths of a percent, 14,044. And the S&P 500. Down a quarter of a percent, 4,490. But of course, the trading day continues. In the exchange markets, the British pound sterling is trading at one US dollar, 24.1 cents, one euro, 14.4 cents, and 22 South African rand, 85.8 cents. In commodities, gold's up just over a percentage point, so almost up one and two tenths percent at $1,982 per troy ounce. And a barrel of Brent crude down four and a quarter percent at $77.58. You've got an investment plan? Yeah, Mike set it up. But don't you need loads of money to do that? Not this one. It's called Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall and you pay in monthly as little as £100. So it's like saving regularly, really helping us invest in the future for a house or the kids' education. £100 a month? I could easily do that. <laughs> you should. The sooner you start, the better. Invest in your future with as little as £100 a month. Shearwater from Ramsey Crookall, the island's investment specialist for 75 years. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. The Isle of Man in 30 minutes. Update on Manx Radio with Andy Wint. Faster mites, 12 minutes before 6. It seems the Isle of Man to run out of places to dump waste. Uh, that was underlined by the extension of the use of Wrights Pit North at Bride to 2030. But alternatives to dumping hazardous material can be found. Here's John Moss. In industrial terms, coal tar is like creosote and it's carcinogenic. So when you find it, as they have on the site of the Balasala Bar, Bypass. What do you do with it? Where do you put it? Not in a skip by the side of the road, it seems, a point made by Southern MHK Tim Glover. Infrastructure Minister Tim Crookall, though, says a solution has been found. The hazardous waste material on site will be removed for processing and will be stabilised with other materials stored on the island to form a hydraulically bound material before being reused in the new construction. The stabilised material is then encapsulated beneath three layers of asphalt. Can the Minister just give some more detail on uh, how um, hazardous waste found, like the coal tar, is going to be stored and disposed of so that we don't have a repeat of uh, a skip sitting in Ballabeg for seven months uh, before it can actually be resolved and processed? That won't happen again, I presume. Minister Chapai. Yeah, very much so, Mr Speaker. That was uh, a great shame that that happened and that was left to sit on the side of the road for seven months before being removed fairly recently. Can the Minister advise whether permission, consent, whatever it is, from the Department of Environment, Food and Agriculture has been received for this um, hazardous uh, waste processing? As other COTAR waste and similar waste from around the island could be put underneath this Bella Salad bypass. The waste processing part of the budget should be separated out from the Balthane um, road budget and, and, and presented it as it is, which is a waste management solution. But I do see this as a way of getting rid of the waste and using, using the waste for a good purpose. Um, coal tar that we already have and that will come up from this project will be used on this project uh, and hopefully it'll be a way in the future of being able to get rid of coal tar because we know there's more of it out there, we just don't know where it is and how much of it there is. Manx Radio.
Motorsport. Fast am I, Rob Pritchard. Fast am I. Good evening. Starting with motorsport and TT competitor Lee Johnston is aiming for a return to racing, including in the Isle of Man TT races in 2024. The riders announced an update on potential plans for the upcoming season in his latest vlog on his YouTube channel this week. The Ashcourt Racing competitor has been continuing to recover and build fitness over the last few months after being seriously injured at this year's Northwest 200 in May, which meant he missed this year's TT. He was in attendance at the Manx Grand Prix, but with Nathan Harrison riding his Honda RC45. In an update to fans, he says the wheels are in motion to put things into place. The plan for next year is pretty much what the plan for this year was. We want to go back and try and do well or try and aim to win the British Super Sport Championship. That was the plan this year. And then obviously with the Northwest 200 and the Isle of Man TT, and we're going to have all the bikes for, for both of them. This is me finally coming out with the news that we're, the, the intention is to go and do the job again properly. In football, the Isle of Man football Football Association has confirmed a new long-term sponsor for one of its cup competitions. It's been announced that Manx Quality Sheds will be the sponsor of the Hospital Cup for the next three years. The tournament takes place towards the end of each season and features all teams from the Canada Life Men's Premier League and DPS Limited Division 2. Carl Gotland, co-owner of Manx Quality Sheds, says having been involved in Manx football as a player for many years, this is a fantastic opportunity to put something back into the local game in a different way. And also in football tonight, Braddon have maintained their perfect start in the Isle of Man Under-18s League with an emphatic victory in the latest round of fixtures last night. They were 11-0 winners over bottom of the table Colby who are still searching for their first points of the new season. In the other game last night, Jims secured their second win on the bounce with a 5-1 victory over Russian United. That moves Jims up to fourth in the table and level on points with Union Mills and Ramsey. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Inbound at Ronald's Way, the 7.30 EasyJet from Gatwick's on time, 10 to 8, Logan Air from London City on time, 5 to 8, Logan Air returning patient transfer plane from Liverpool is on time as well. So outbound, 6 o'clock, Logan Air to Liverpool, and 8 o'clock, EasyJet back to London, Gatwick on the roads. Uh, the Clanner Road in Solby's closed for resurfacing. In Pull Rose, temporary lights on Pull Rose Road near the Methodist Church. They're lining a sewer there. Hillside Avenue Douglas closed through to Circular Road for adjacent office window replacement. Temporary lights on Glen Crutchery Road at the roundabout with Victoria Road for resurfacing. Part of Switzerland Road's closed for construction work for the next year. Temporary lights between Johnny Watterson's Lane and the Scullock Road at Ballinard Road for ditch clearing. Temporary lights on Market Street Douglas near Chester Street Car Park for water main work. Look out also in Laxey. Old Laxey Hill's close for excavation work and temporary lights on Main Road near Churchill for gas main work. Port Sodrick, Glen Road, closed for tree trimming. In Crosby, you've got temporary lights on the main road, the A1 at uh, Bala Vitral Road for excavation work. And in Glen May, the Arrasy Road's closed from Glen May to the Shoulder Road for resurfacing. Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Spread your payments interest-free. Get more with... Keyside! Data revealed by the Cabinet Office shows nearly 20% of the Alamans' working population works for the government. Here's Christian Jones. A Freedom of Information request was submitted which asks for the total number of government workers and the associated cost in salaries for the year ending March 2023. In response, government says 8,324 individuals were employed, which includes both full and part-time workers. The total amount paid in salaries to government staff was shy of three. £373 million. Now, those figures are made up across all government departments, boards and bodies, such as the Department of Health and Social Care, Manx Care, Home Affairs and Infrastructure, to name but a few. But they also include places like the General Registry, Manx National Heritage and the Financial Supervision Authority. Now, when we compare the data to the same period from a year earlier, so March 2022, the number of employees totaled 8,380, despite there being being 54 more employees on the payroll, the cost associated was nearly £29 million less. Update. Brought to you by Simcox Advocates. Advising businesses and families since 1949. Visit Simcox.com or call 690 300. A disabled motorist says there's some confusion about blue badge parking policies on the Isle of Man and it doesn't make sense. Joanne Hill, who's an amputee and is able to park in disabled bays, had previously been told he could have double the amount of signposted time in a disabled space. But as she tells us, she recently got a ticket for staying too long. Several years ago, 
I asked for clarification with regards to the times for parking in disabled spaces in disc zones and the traffic warden told me that if you were parked in a disabled parking area, you got the time that was displayed on the sign. However, if you were parked in a disabled space within a parking area, for instance, the promenade, you got double the time. This is what I've been doing for years. Never had a problem, never had a ticket, never been advised as anything different. So on Saturday, I did what I normally do, parked on the promenade in the disabled spaces. And when I got back to the car, I had a parking ticket. And when I spoke to the traffic warden who just put the ticket on the car, he advised me that the double time for parking in a disc zone for disabled people is only in the non-disabled parking spaces and not in the disabled space. As far as he was concerned, that is the ruling. We got home and we went on to the Isle of Man government website. The guidance that was on there was is exactly what I'd been advised, that it was double the time. I did email the parking fines office and they sent me the guidance that is issued with the disabled badges and it does appear now as though there has been a change in the ruling. On One sentence says, in disc parking zones you must display a time clock. You're entitled to park double the length of the specified time. However, below it, it says in designated disabled parking spaces you're entitled to park for the specified time only. But that, again, that is only issued with a new badge, which are every three years. If the guidance has changed within that time, you're not to know until your badge is renewed. If you parked in the disabled spot, you get the two hours. If you parked in front or a car in front of you is a disabled badge parked there, they get double the time. It just doesn't seem logical to me. That's it for update tonight, compiled from the resources of Manx Radio's news department, thanks to newsreader Siobhan Fletcher, producer Beth Espy. After the news at six, Christy De Haven, along with Diabetes Doesn't Define You. It's a National Diabetes Week. Greater Sits with Chris Kinley at 6.30. A Little Light Music will Morris Powell at 9 and Rhianne Evans at 10. W-I-N-T